A very good afternoon and welcome along to Mansfield Park for the Tenants Men's Premiership Final. It's a chilly 11th of March and Curry, of course, are the visitors to Mansfield Park this afternoon. They will certainly, dear fancy, want to uh, put to bed the disappointment of almost 12 months ago. It's the start of April when they lost at home to Mar. But uh, this is, of course, a, a Hoyt club that between 1974 and 1987 won 10 domestic championships, two in the very early part of the 21st century. And uh, after many years, from their point of view in the doldrums, an opportunity for them to once again lift the, the National Premiership trophy. Yeah, definitely. I think you, you look at both of the, the teams here today, then Hoik have, have taken a long time to get back into this position to win a championship. Their last championship was in 2002. Curry, theirs was 13 years ago in 2010, but you allude to that game last year at, at Millennia against Mar. It was a, a huge encounter. It was a bit of a seesaw affair as well, but in that occasion, the team that finished second in the championship ended up beating the team that, that finished top and went a long period of the season unbeaten as well. And almost the shoes on the other foot this afternoon. Indeed, and it's worth pointing out as well, for certainly for people that don't uh, necessarily enjoy the concept of playoffs, that it is the top two sides that are involved in this playoff final. Hoyk having won 17 and drawn one of their 18 regulation matches of the, the season, and uh, Curry having played 18 matches, won 14 and lost four. You can see that the Curry side is making their way out onto the park. We'll take a quick look at the Curry squad this afternoon. Uh, and of course, they've got a, a couple of players in the form of Charlie Brett and DJ Innes that were part of the team last weekend. That's Curry on the park in the, the black jerseys with the gold numbers. And they will start with Charlie Brett this afternoon at fullback. Of course, uh, someone who was uh, very much a a key component of last season's route to that playoff final and ultimately the disappointment losing at home to Mar at Millennium Park. DJ Innes also in the side. Ian Sim, who now resides in Winchborough in West Lothian. He is making his eighth appearance for the club. A player who we know from the borders, Neil Clancy, very well indeed as an ex-Southern Knights player, but he's played for a number of border clubs. He'll enjoy an occasion like this. Yeah, he definitely will. He's, you know, he's not made a lot of appearances for Curry, but you know, he'll show up in the final. He's a powerful winger. He's a really, really difficult operator on the wing, and you know, he'll really test the the outside backs for Hoyt. But you know, certainly up front as well, they've got a lot of experience. The likes of Ryan Stewart and Ali McCallum and Gregor Nelson, and the captain as well, Reese Davis, captain in the side from number eight. And a big cheer for the Hoyt side, all in green with their white numbers and white trims just on the back. Let's take a look then at the Hoyt side this afternoon. As we mentioned, they've been in the, the doldrums in recent times, but uh, they've got uh, in that front row the likes of Sean Muir, who has made over 200 appearances, Fraser Rennick, who has, of course, set uh, under 20 international experience, and, of course, is an ex-Super 6 player, Nicky Little as well. The combined front row have 400 appearances to their name. But before the match gets underway, we're going to have a, a moment's silence to remember the passing of Ian Frizzle, Catherine Scholar and Alwyn Greenenhoff, three important figures related to the Hoyt Club, and this is the first opportunity the club has had to remember their passing. There will be a moment silence then before kickoff, and the spectators, those that can, are standing to remember the three. An impeccably observed minute silence as the officials on the pitch. The referee is Michael Todd, Fergus Hollins and Mary Pringle, his two on-pitch assistants. Mary, of course, was the referee for the women's Premiership final, which was uh, contested up at uh, 
Stirling at Bridge Hall just a few weeks ago. But uh, as the pipe band makes a rather hasty retreat off the pitch, Dale, your final thoughts before we get this tenants Premiership final underway. Yeah, you know it's been a, it's been a long season, 18 games in the in the regular season. Then they both need to navigate their way through a semi final, and it all comes down to this. Obviously, we were alluding to the Hoyk team there as well. The home side, they just had their last chance to. You know, gather their thoughts in that minute silence, pay their respects, and they'll be doing battle against the team who'll be certainly looking to upset the odds, odds and uh, definitely make amends after last year. It's a great occasion, the stand is full of spectators from either side, and I think this is going to be a cracking final. Yes, the, the concept of the Super Six has certainly benefited a, a team like Hoyk, who prior to that were uh, struggling at the foot of the Premiership table, but uh, they've been somewhat revived in recent times. Sean Muir, the captain of the side, uh, He's a survivor of the 2015 Cup final when uh, Hoyk lost out to Borough Muir. This is certainly the biggest occasion since then, and that box kick guided back there, Kyle Brunton is able to get a first touch and play that down, sailing over the head there of Gregor Christie. And that finds touch just up towards the halfway line, across from a, a very well packed main stand here at Mansfield Park and a clutch of very colourful Curry supporters occupying a section of banking across on the far side but it's a, an early line-out ball and one in that second row, Will Ingalls winning line-out ball, galloping forward and a nice little one-two allowing Curry to get some space beyond that 10 metre line, Rennick was back with the block challenge, through the hands it comes DG and it's now out towards the left-hand side and Ian Sim, we mentioned him in the build-up, he's uh, Certainly supported by his father, who's watching on from the stand as Sim gets back into position. Curry looking for an early opportunity inside that 22. Carried there by Chris Anderson in the front row. Back it comes to the, the fly half and inside centre. Greg Carney taking a real solid challenge. Upright going in on the edge of the 22. Back it comes, a little misunderstanding involving the half-backs. And uh, the referee penalising Hoyk on the edge of the 22. Curry getting on with things very quickly. Charlie Brett tries to work his way up towards that five metre line, circulating ball out towards the right hand side, Curry again, momentum dropped just ever so slightly but Hoyk remained disciplined across their own five metre line, Curry of course as Dale mentioned they've uh, had a few championships successes themselves, 12 in all for Hoyk, the last coming back in 2002 and they have certainly been the, the standout, most impressive side in the division. But it's a, an early test for Hoyt defensively as Curry are going well. Yeah, definitely. Curry have been the standout side for the last two minutes in this game. They really want to come with a lot of tempo. And you can see the difference Jamie Forbes gives them at 10. Usually Gregor Hunter slots in that position. He's more of a pivotal 10. Jamie Forbes likes to take the ball to the line quickly there from the halfway position. He got the ball at, at fly half and he just targeted the back of the line out. He knew there was a gaping gap in there. Managed to release a, a teammate in a bit of space. And that's when they were behind the Hoyt defence. They were putting the pressure on. And Hoyt had to scramble really, really difficult, like hard to get back to kind of contend with that difficult attack from Curry and from it they've got the penalty and they get the chance to get the first points on the board this afternoon of course uh, ex Scotland Club 15 player may oh. well want to resume uh, his honours at international level but his thoughts very much in the domestic championship had a spell at Watsonians as well and he slotted over the opening points there Jamie Forbes, 113th appearance for Curry this afternoon landed a penalty and a conversion in the home game against uh, Hoyk earlier in the season and that penalty all came from a, a, a good kick off from Curry and it was a scrappy you know clearance kick from Kirk Ford and then a scuffed effort from Kyle Brunton as well so you, the Curry you know they've started the game with a lot of intent they've put Hoyk under pressure and they know they cannot let Hoyk start quickly because in the previous fixture in the league Hoyk got off to an absolute flyer and put them to the sword so Curry have certainly made amends for that and get their noses in front. Yeah, when the sides met at uh, Millennium Park back in October, Curry 25, Hoyt 46 was the, the final score, that's a, a deeper restart kick and gathered there by Curry scrum half Gregor Christie, goes to the ground just on the edge of the, the 22, and looking to mop up the Davis skippering Curry this afternoon and taking the ball up towards that 22 very deliberately trying to gain some ground back row forward this time is Ali McCallum 16 appearances now in a Curry jersey there's the box kick out on that, Hoyt's number 8 underneath it, wasn't quite sure but made certain there, Jay Linton 
They're going to try and run into some open space. London fending off one, two, three. Curry players now up towards the 22. Home support on their feet as Linton is inside that 22 now. Hoyt looking to recycle some ball here. Penalty awarded to the home side. They were looking for a, a swift response. There's a yellow card in there as well. I think that's to Gregor Christie by the looks of things. The scrum half. It looks like he's... Um, going to be departing them, certainly looked like there was a yellow card issued and yeah, scrum half Christie is going off, he's already had one yellow card this season and that's a huge change, you know, in terms of losing your scrum half, your ability, your playmaker in there, but Jay Linton, there should be absolutely, you know, there's no right to be able to do that sort of carry at this level, he gathered the ball, a bit of a guddle, but as soon as he gets going, he is so difficult to stop, he's so powerful and he managed just to back three, four players out the road, get Hoik in a good position and he gives them a pop at the posts. Yeah, that's to bring them back on level terms, he missed part of the season through a combination of injury and uh, some travelling scored a try in the, the semi-final victory over Mar, last season's winners of the, the Tenants Premiership Trophy this penalty then to level the game Hoyk been behind us for the matter of a couple of minutes a big cheer around Mansfield Park and we're all square yeah in terms of a, a home side a reaction they've went straight up the other end of the pitch they've replied to what the visitors offered initially and that's, that yellow card is huge but Jay Linton a man who's had a serious neck injury last season in the game against GHA he's came back and he looks better than ever and it's a great carry from the big number 8 managing just to bounce off a few individuals but I think it's going to mean that we'll probably see the introduction of Paddy Boyer experienced scrum half He'll have to come on and plug the gap that Gregor Christie has uh, left for the, the visiting side. Yeah, of course, ex-Glasgow Hawks, Scotland club internationalist. A little uh, footnote uh, regarding the, the penalty there from Kirk Ford. That's now 30 points this season that he slotted over against Curry. It's a very impressive record as the, the restart from JB Forbes is deep. Ford is able to collect and play that just down the channels. So both sides able to take advantage of early opportunities. Curry with that initial lead lasting no more than two minutes. Ford's penalty levelling the contest at three points all. And you fancy, Dale, that uh, Hoyk will come in with a, a great deal of confidence. There'll be a certain element of pressure on them because there, there's a big crowd here, because the expectation is that uh, they're an unbeaten side domestically and they'll want to go the, the, the full season that way. Yeah, the, the, you know, they're guided by a really young coach, Matty Douglas, but it's things like this, being able to turn over the ball at a line-out, it gets the crowd behind you. You know, it, they're wanting to use that advantage of the home, you know, the home crowd to really play in, in the minds of the Curry players. But you've still got to play rugby, play in the right areas, and Hector Patterson's just put Hoyk back into a relatively good area with that box kick. And Stuart Graham and Ethan Riley were giving chase there from the initial box kick as Curry looked to try and mop up and carry up towards that 10 metre line. Supporting the, the ball carrier there was Kieran Ramsey, 22 year old tight head prop. Back it comes through the hands of Forbes out towards that right hand channel. And again, Curry steady and deliberate. Solid challenge coming in there, and Ewan Stewart, the lock forward, who's bundled backwards, just illustrating the determination in this Hoyk side. But it's worked through the hands then of Ryan Stewart. Curry have got some men out on that left hand side. Ethan Riley with a good block challenge, but Curry continue going forward. DJ Ennis, a real determined figure. He took last season's de de defeat rather in the, the playoff final as a huge disappointment. They want to try and put that right this afternoon. Recycle ball. And Curry are trying to get up towards halfway. Paddy Boyer applauding the referee's decision to give the penalty against Hoyk. And Curry will have a chance to play this one deeper into Hoyk territory. It's an interesting opening. Near 10 minutes, we've played three points all. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those games, Curry, in terms of head to head, Curry have a better attack than Hoyk, but Hoyk have far superior, a better defence. But you can see there when they put in those really aggressive tackles, when they're driving the players back, they're actually getting a little bit stretched, they're getting caught out wide, and that's Curry's advantage. They'll try to bring the players, the likes of Cody McGovern, he's pretty much got a try a game that he plays for Curry. You know, they're trying to stretch the park, really bring the players like McGovern and Innes into the game, but that's when. Hoyk really need to pounce if they're driving into those tackles and making aggressive tackles they need to try and kill that ball or slow the play down because if they open it up that's when teams like Curry are dangerous to, to release their outside backs 
Line-out ball, secured this time by the back row forward, Ali McCallum. And then immediately Curry trying to scurry down towards the, the 22. Misunderstanding, Rhys Davis, the captain, unable to get hands on the ball. And Hoyk have won it back just on their own 10. Delicate stuff there from Kyle Brunton. Picked up though by Ian Sim. Sim very direct up towards that uh, 22. You can sh see his power there, his bulk perhaps uh, benefiting from those years as a Super 6 player. A little chip in behind from Forbes, but a little bit too much in that, allowing Brunt, uh, allowing Kit Ford rather to come all the way across on that five metre line, call the mark and just ease the pressure on that Hoyk side. Almost exactly 10 minutes on the clock, three points off. It was a player we highlighted before the game, Ian Sim, we know him from his time in the borders playing for Kelso and Melrose, but he, he reminds me of Jordan Edmonds, you know, Jordan Edmonds, ex Muro winger, was a really powerful character on the wing, he looked like he probably wasn't the quickest of, of individuals, but when he got going and he managed just to shake off that first tackle, he was really hard to stop, and you can see the players are aware of that from the Hoyk side, they're trying to go in and a couple of players to, to really target Sim, but equally on the other wing they've got Cody McGovern, so if, they, uh, if it doesn't work for Sim, I'm sure that Curry will look to fly the ball out to the other side and, and try and release the other winger. Of course Jordan Edmonds uh, featuring as part of the, the Scotland Commonwealth Games squad back at the tail end of last summer when the games were held in Birmingham and uh, it certainly developed over the, the two years leading up to the games in August of last year. As one of the Curry players I think is uh, requiring a little bit of attention, a contact lens perhaps being dislodged and play will resume in just a few moments. There's still one or two spectators I can see drifting in, taking up positions across in the banking over on that far side. Overhead, the conditions are, are pretty good, Dale, it has to be said. And a word for the, the efforts of th those involved, the ground staff, and a good number of volunteers making this pitch playable. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth there, Stuart, because it doesn't just uh, snow on the fringes of the pitch here at Hoyt. That's been a, a monumental effort. They've covered the pitches all week. They've uh, been blowing it off the, the, the pitch midweek to make sure that this game goes ahead. It's in great condition. You know, and, and, and certainly this is a great occasion in terms of the, the spectators that he, are here to you know, really witness what is going to be a, an entertaining game by the looks of it. Angle's doing well to win the ball in the line, it's back towards Brett, Brett was challenged as he released the ball there, Ethan Riley on very quickly, the Hoyk outside centre, back it comes and Hoyk looking to clear from their own five metre line, don't appear to be under too much stress and pressure for the most part inside their own 22 there and uh, Kyle Brunton cut almost a nonchalant figure as he was able to take his time and play that one from the five metre line down between the 10 and 22. Yeah he's a, he's a very laid back character Kyle Brunton in terms of being a fly half, he's again more of a pivotal fly half, likes to distribute, likes to get the likes of Mitchell and Riley into the game but they've got that good balance, you can see he was sweeping in behind their full back position, Kirk Ford equally can come up into the fly half position and they'll use that balance quite well in Hoyt but yeah certainly didn't look under any pressure to clear his lines and made a good kick from centre field and it's went back on the Hoyt side as well. Fraser Rennick picking up there the, the throw in from his opposite number Ryan Stewart and Rennick was able to carry it's recycled it's back this time it's the left boot of Kyle Brunton just put a little bit too much on that it's gone out in the full so it will be a throw in on the 10 metre line across by the banking side where the most accumulations of snow have been uh, piled up but uh, over the, the course of the, the morning they seem to have disappeared somewhat as three points all remains the, the scoreline in these opening exchanges 12 and a half minutes on the clock Both sides of course looking for the grand prize a trophy goes back to the initial structuring of the, the league campaign back in the mid 1970s that's throwing I think maybe one or two people feeling was slightly squint here, but uh, taken on by the back row forward, Ali McCallum, and stolen by Hoyk, and taken this time by Callum Rennick, as he tried to gain ground up towards the 10 metre line, but the response was set uh, swift from Curry's point of view, immediate riposte there, they've won the penalty just by that 10 metre line. And Dale, will they go for the post here to the corner? I think they've got to go for the post, if you ask me. I would have said that the, it's the, the realistic option. They've got a man in the bin. You know, they've, they've done well in the time that, they, that Gregor Christie's been off the field. They've been down to 14 men, and this just eats a little bit into the clock as well. But, you know, Sean Muir is just having a, a conversation with Michael Todd there because I think he feels that Cairn Ramsey was perhaps just on the wrong side there and they were hard done by. But Michael Todd was there very quickly to see what was going on at that breakdown. And, you know, tactically, in terms of time management, this is this is great for Curry because it manages to eat into the time, and they can, you know, waste that to get to get their uh, starting nine back on the field and, and get back up to a full complement of players. Uh, Seventy-three points 
from the boot this season. He has slotted over a penalty, Jamie Forbes, to get this match up and running. So that makes 76 as he glances down at the ball and up at the posts. The yellow card, just one minute left to serve before Curry will be back to a full complement of players. So the Curry fly half with this opportunity to give Curry the lead once more in this tenants Premiership playoff final. Here he goes then. Clean right footed strike. Assistants quick glance at each other, raising the flags. Curry find themselves back in front by six points to three and having to negotiate the, the skill set and the determination of Hoyt minus a man and it's uh, been quite a, a productive nearly 10 minutes for the visiting side. It definitely has, they've been utilising the ball carriers at the right times, the likes of Davis, you know, coming off the line out, just hitting a little bit wider and feeding off of Forbes when he's got the ball in hand. But for this last, you know, duration of time since uh, Hoyt got the penalty, they've not been in the curry half. Curry have starved them of ball, not let them play and they put the pressure back onto Hoyk and, and the scoreboard does illustrate what the game's been like. McCallum with a little sidestep, the back row forward to take play outside of that 22, Cairn Ramsey continuing, battering Ram of a tight head drop mopped up there by Bohr, floated yeah, kick then good. from the curry fly half there, Jamie Forbes, and it's uh, allowed to bounce just uh, over the try line there, shepherded back and Hoyt pinging that one into touch there. It was uh, watched all the way by Jay Linton, but cleared downfield and the throw-in will go to Curry just outside the 22. And that's the perils of the bounce of a rugby ball because, you know, Hoyt get a good kick off downfield, they get in a really good position, but they don't make the first hit as they're carrying out. Curry managed to break a couple of tackles, get in behind, and then the kick downfield just catches out Jay Linton in the wrong position. The bounce of the ball takes them over the line. Kirkford, I thought, did the intelligent thing to clear just isn't able to make the ground and Curry now back on the attack. Curry with the line out, this time it comes good, you'll see Christie's back on, the nine back on for Curry, Paddy Boyer disappeared into one of those sleeping bag like jackets and has made his way down towards the, the front of the stand, his little uh, cameo ten minutes completed as a yellow card replacement and Curry again looking to go forwards, just delaying the pass, working it out towards the full back Brett out on that right hand side but again Hoyk of uh, a solid line of green inside the 22 are able to get possession of the ball and inside the 22 will just take a, a few moments clear downfield as I was saying the, the crowd it's not quite capacity inside the main stand there are some blue seats available but a healthy crowd across on that far side and uh, just uh, an illustration of at least what the spectators make of the the premiership play of concept yeah definitely I think it's you know it's great it's it's an occasion like this that I've not seen Mansfield Park this busy probably in, in terms of my rugby involvement I've never seen it this packed even at sevens time uh, but they're certainly appreciative of the the good initiative there from Kirk Ford he managed to gather that quick ball call his mark and he's kicked it downfield and again at the line out that's three line outs that Hoy could have been able to steal and they're trying to launch Jay Linton into Curry yeah, that's certainly one thing that uh, Curry will be disappointed about is uh, how the, the set piece has fared we've just really seen a collection of line outs from different areas of the park so far as Hoyt then trying to build inside centre taking on there is Andrew Mitchell a youngster of course many of them coming through age grade routes through high school and through feeder clubs towards Hoyk and the, their first team and an illustration of the, the strength that the, the side can boast at the moment Curry are a side that uh, have welcomed in players uh, from far and wide it has to be said and that collection has served them well given they were second in the table after the regulation 18 games Yeah and you know from a Curry point of view that's because of the you know the targets that set themselves as a rugby club, they're a successful rugby club two premiership crowns obviously and players want to go to Millennium to play rugby and you know there's a, a couple of players from the town I was at that are now playing for Curry you know settled near the, near the area and they're playing you know in Curry colours now and Hoyk they, they managed to get players you know, retain in the town and that's what they rely on to get success but great defence to get to this point from Curry there from Innocent and Canny it was great work on Mitchell and Ryan Stewart one of the, the players that you were referring to there part of that scrum in the front row Grubber kick now the chase is on here Curry have they got the acceleration fine piece of running there as Hoyk took two players almost getting in each other's way Curry appealing that they were able to get a clean grounding of the ball Greg Canny cannot believe it Hoyk appealing as well the referee is uh, cutting a, a fairly chilled out figure at the moment Dale, we'll get to see this opportunity again, it was played through there, 
Charlie Brett just not quite having the pace supported on that right hand side I think by Cody McGovern and we'll get to see if the, the grounding is clean or how untidy it was it was really well back from Riley if he did able to get there it looks like it's maybe just touched the try line which means that he's grounded it and you could see DG Ennis was there quickly into the ear of Michael Todd but it did look like it was great cover work from Ethan Riley who managed to get back from a position where he was really isolated but that just shows you how dangerous and how stretched this Hoyt side is you know has been manipulated by this this Curry back line because they managed to exploit that space first quarter has come and gone first attacking scrum here for Curry. Forbes delayed the pass looking to bring the inside centre DJ Ennis in and it was a case of dealing with a hot potato there as the ball was flying towards the outside centre Hoyk have it back once more and it's their outside centre Ethan Riley with a clearance kick down Mary Pringle the assistant across on that far side raising her flag the throw in just outside of the, the 22 and the opening quarter has come and gone with Curry leading by six points to three, three penalties in the opening 20 minutes. I think Riley has, has showed his importance since he's came into this squad. He, he made his debut against uh, Selkirk uh, earlier on in the Premiership campaign, dislodged Grant Huggin from that position as well. And, and in terms of defensive organisation, his work rate and his skill set as well, I think he's shown already in the opening 20 minutes how important he is to this Hoyt side. It's a better constructed line out there from a, a curry point of view and sitting a little deeper was Ali McCallum and unopposed he was able to gather possession of the ball curry up just in towards the, the 22 on that right hand side looking for runners oh, that was a, a nice steal there by the, the right winger McGovern had to reach above head height to gather possession of the ball Christie comes in mops up here loose head was trying to carry the ball forward there Chris Anderson and that was knocked on by the loose head player is down he will receive a little bit of treatment by that five metre line he gets back to his feet some disappointment there but Curry two or three opportunities now when they've had the, the ball through the hands and it's been one sharp pass that has maybe not been quite read by the the player who's been seen as the, the recipient had he done so he might have been in for a score yeah I think the first occasion there I think the first opportunity that Curry had was Hoyt defence was on top that second one there has just been a little bit too flat from Curry's point of view just a little bit too keen but I do think Nicky Little is perhaps fortunate there that the, the assistant referees didn't notice the, the late-ish tackle uh, on Chris Anderson because he was riding a little bit high but the, the play had almost stopped and I think they perhaps gave him the benefit of the doubt but again you know 18 minutes into this game 21 minutes into this game, sorry, and uh, you know it, it's been a lot of time camped inside this Hoyt half, which I don't think, you know, in the balance of play that we've seen in the first two games that they've played, is not what we were probably expecting. Hector Patterson, the 18 year old Hoyt scrum half, feeds the ball in to the scrum, away he goes, tries a sidestep once, twice, runs into Forbes there, needs some reinforcements coming in behind, and the green jerseys now swarming around the scrum half, who's on the deck, and it's mopped up there quickly by Nicky Little remember we said just in the, the build up to the commentary 400 appearances across that uh, front three in the, the Hoik ranks this afternoon as they once again clear their lines down just beyond the 22 but uh, this is a, a period of uh, not necessarily Curry dominance but Curry certainly on top at the moment and uh, they'll be aware that the scoreboard remains just a, a three point game and feel that they'll need to get something from these visits to the 22 because this is when they have the upper hand Yeah, a league campaign's about getting as many points as you can in terms of points against opposition and league points Curry have managed this game brilliantly so far managed to stretch the Hoyt Park and stretch the defence and get them into positions to play some rugby as they're doing just now they're stretching Hoyt and they're trying to manipulate them but good defence from Hoyt is able to get the penalty back on their side but you know even three points one point if it comes down to the end of the game whoever's got the, the, the highest points tally is going to be the champions yeah it's that sort of knockout aspect of the, the league season where the, the concept changes somewhat when you get into the, the last four and it's a straight shootout from that uh, point forward 23 almost 23 and a half minutes of the, the game gone Dale you spotted something over on that far side there's a there's a cluster of uh, curry spectators that came down in the bus I think some of the twos players and they've been <laughs> pelted with snowballs from the the uh, hike minis there's a, a little bit of a warfare going on in the banking which is uh, great to see 
and certainly it's good to see that they're um, both sides well represented on the bank in, it, in Mansfield Park. It seems to be all in, in good spirits at the moment at least, let's hope it uh, continues that way as the uh, line out on halfway, point trailing then by six points to three, Curry with their fly half, Jamie Forbes with two penalty goals, the first cancelled out two minutes after he slotted over the three points for the visitors, but a Kirk Ford penalty is now 30 points against Curry this season. Curry spreading the ball then just beyond that 10 metre line. DJ Ennis is tackled before he can make halfway. Ian Sim goes in just to shoot off the ball. Then Sim back pedals as Christie now is able to feed the ball back inside. Callum Rennick leading the defensive cover there for the Greens. Curry with those gold numbers in, in the black jerseys this afternoon. Now the galloping major, away he goes, taken on the loose head brought there. Chris Anderson up towards the edge of the 22, recycled ball on towards Greg Canney out on this left hand side. DJ Ennis now finds Ian Sim and Simpson in the corner, and that's a wonderful Curry score. They spread the ball out wide, their handling was assured on this occasion, but it was powerful running from the forwards. And I think a lot of credit goes to Chris Anderson to begin with, with his efforts. The ball working its way through the midfield, involving Carney and Innes, eventually out to Ian Sim on that left-hand side. And Ian Sim coming good with 25 minutes gone. Curry leading by 11 points to three, and they have five points from the latest visit to the Detroit 22. If you're watching rugby and you, you, you're thinking how easy that score was, it was all made by Chris Anderson. He picked a huge gap in midfield on the halfway line, scampered through and kept going forward. What that means is the defensive line from Hoyt have to get back. You know, their back is facing their goal, they need to turn around and try and get back quickly. And Curry just went quick, straight away from that breakdown, managed to get the ball wide, and Hoyt players are having to get into position. And it was just a matter of picking them off after that. And it was great awareness from DG Innes. He managed to draw in the two players and release Ian Simmon. You know, all wingers like to do that, 10 metres out, scampering along the, the touchline and, and swan diving in for a score. And you, you have to say, it's just what Curry deserve. Forbes then, almost right on the touchline by the 22. Fairly acute angle for the fly half. Jimmy Forbes just taking his time. And that kick is drifting across the face of the posts there. So it's Hoyt 3, Curry 11. And we're approaching the half hour mark, 26 and a half minutes of the, the first half gone. And the Hoyt supporters, many of them inside Mansfield Park, looking to find their voices to cheer on a home side that uh, maybe need a little nudge from somewhere just now. Yeah, just kind of have not been able to let them play, which is you know exactly what they're trying to do. They're, they're looking to suffocate their forwards up front, not allow the, the Hoyt forwards time with ball in hand. And then they're stretching them, and you can see the forwards, I was going to say the forwards from Curry have had the upper hand, but that's a rare error there from Davis, who's just knocked on from the kickoff. And Hoyt will be looking to try and take this opportunity, spend some time inside the Curry 22 and build some confidence. Yeah, it's all about the, the composure there. Sometimes you're at your most vulnerable when you've uh, just taken a lead, or in Curry's case, extended the lead, having scored that Ian Sim try. So 11 3, the, the score line. 27 minutes gone and Hoyk have, haven't had too many visits inside the Curry 22 in the, the 27 minutes we've played so far. They've been making breaks from deep but uh, this is a, about as far down the park as they've been so far in the game. Yeah, one of note, the one Jay Linton broke from his own halfway line and uh, you know, inside his own half, over the halfway line, got into the, the opposition 22 and they got the penalty and after that it's been Curry on the other end so you know, this is a, a rare venture for Hoyk at home you know, into the 22. The, the previous fixture, they were well ahead in terms of points, but not this game, it's a completely different battle. Patterson feeding the ball into the scrum, Linton trying to control with the left boot, Patterson then is uh, clobbered as uh, Christie comes flying through there, the penalty already having been awarded by a referee this afternoon, Michael Todd. So Hoyt will look to continue a spell in the game inside or on the fringes of that Curry 22 deal. Yeah, they'll be looking to probably pop this into the corner and exert some pressure up front, but you've got to commend Christie there, the scrum half for Curry. He's back onto the field, and what he noticed was that there was a free ball there for Hoyk. They got a chance to try whatever they want. They don't need to be careful. They can be as carefree as they like. Hector Patterson was trying to get the ball away and Christie completely suffocated it. He just snaffled on the, the scrum half, which meant that there was no opportunity there. But the penalty comes and they get closer to the line and, and Hoyk will be looking to pounce. 
And Sean Muir comes across, giving Fraser Rennick some instructions. Of course, Rennick, who had a spell skippering the Southern Knights last campaign. Rennick looking to join in the drive. Hoyt looking to construct them all. It's collapsed just short of the, the try line. And Patterson again on towards Jay Linton. Linton tries to straighten up, tries to find those telescopic arms to stretch out towards the try line. Rennick has it once more, but he's stopped just short of the line. Patterson sitting behind. Patterson then looking for Sean Muir this time. And Muir dropping that right shoulder, taking the ball into contact. Was tackled and forced back there by Greg Canny. Another Hoyt penalty. They're beginning to mount up inside that Curry 22 as Hoyt are looking just to try and apply a little bit more pressure. This is a, a, a big call for, for Muir here, the Hoyt captain, because you know it's in a, in a position where, and that's exactly what I thought he would go for, being a prop forward, you know, it's a penalty five metres from the opposition line, he's uh, certainly taste, uh, smelling blood at the moment because they've got the upper hand up front in the scrum, they've got that dominance because they got that penalty earlier on and they can see that and they, it's a difficult decision because you're so far behind in terms of scoreboard pressure but this, I think this is the option that they, they probably should have opted for and it'll be interesting to see how this pans out. Approaching the a half hour mark, this attacking scrum then for Hoyk. Patterson looking to feed the ball in to the scrum. We mentioned uh, just 18 years old, he's been training with the Scotland under 20s. So that valuable experience for the youngster. Disappears then behind the forwards, feeding the ball in and pops back up. Jay Linton again, Hoyt number eight, trying to control. But Curry's defensive scrum holding firm just at the moment. That's a, a good scrum there, I think the introduction of Jamie Drummond as well in the, in the front row has helped that. He uh, replaced Chris Anderson earlier on after he just set up the try pretty much with his, his run. He's obviously spent a bit much there and Jamie Drummond's came on, he's a very good scrummager and he's certainly showed his uh, importance to that Curry front row there. Managed to keep Curry, uh, Hoyk at bay but because it popped up there's another chance here for Hoyt to put the ball in and, and try and nudge their way over. Just adds to the tension off the occasion before kick-off the, the trophy a splendid sort of old-fashioned looking trophy was out just by the edge of the tunnel Hoyt will have eyes on that as they work their way towards the, the trial line trying to get themselves back into the contest taken on then by Brunton straightens up almost backs himself certainly drawing in a couple of defenders there the, the Hoyk fly half Kyle Brunton looking to spread the ball perhaps out towards the, the right hand side they're keeping ever closer towards the line the referee Michael Todd squatting down and then popping back up to see how close Hoyt were to the line they're peppering this try line it's a better spell much better from the home side yeah it seems a little bit more patient I think Curry when they've been kicking tactically when they've been forcing Hoyk into errors you know Hoyk know that when they're in this position they have to be patient they have to trust their scrum they have to trust their forward dominance and when the opportunity is there the free ball they do have the backs that will be able to unlock them and you can see how quick the likes of Callum and Fraser Rennick get round that corner when they've got a free ball because you know they're able to nudge their way over and get in between the defenders because they've got that power they're low to the ground low centre of the gravity and they're dangerous from this position but certainly Hoyk just need to be patient because uh, it's certainly in, a, in an advantageous position with this scrum things have settled down a little bit on the banking as uh, Curry supporters uh, many of them wearing the, the black and gold scarves now focus very much on the defensive effort off their side not being distracted by throwing the snowballs anymore as uh, Patterson readies himself with Christie alongside him Patterson then into the scrum a scrum five but supporters then looking for something from this opportunity. Patterson waving those forward. He gets the ball back. He has to scamper back. But the referee had already made the call. And they're, they're going to wear out a section of pitch very shortly if they're not careful. Yeah, and wear out their lungs as well. Because uh, I don't think the forwards will be welcoming all these reset scrums. But you can see the pressure that Hoyk do put on. And Patterson there was looking at Michael Todd. He's looking for that penalty to come. But there, the, the referee is a, did a judge it that it was it, the ball was there to play. So there was no free ball, no advantage from the penalty. And they were lucky to get it back on their side. But Michael Todd again bringing it back for a reset scrum. Hoyt go again, but Curry digging in really, really well. So Patterson once more. Case of deja vu here as the two scrum halves side by side. Patterson then with the triple tap and then into the scrum his way around towards the, the corner by Linton, on towards Brunton, taken on then by the outside centre, Riley disappears into some black and gold curry jerseys, 
and Curry this time have done enough to force Hoyt to knock the ball on there a handling error five metres from the Curry line easing the pressure on the Millennium Park side as they'll be able to clear their lines and have an opportunity to clear the line certainly and, and deal that was five or six minutes excellent defensive work as Hoyt were applying pressure for really the, the first time in this first half deep in Curry territory yeah and it's an opportunity gone for them but Curry did have that you know earlier on in the first half they did have a couple of opportunities that passed them by eventually they were able to get one but great work the fringes, I couldn't quite see clearly who managed to scrag Patterson round the, the back of that ruck there but uh, just an arm playing the scrum half, playing his arm it's uh, invited the knock on and, and Curry get the ball back but you would imagine here Hoyk will try and put a little bit of pressure on at the scrum So this time it's Christie with the put in and the referee penalising Hoyk at the scrum as they did as Dale was saying, tried to apply a little bit of pressure and just overcooked it somewhat a chance now for Curry just to clear downfield. This from the, their own five metre line. It's been interesting in the game in terms of how both teams have performed because Curry look like they're the settled team, they look relaxed, they look composed, and they're really inserting their game plan into this fixture. Like Hoyk are finding it hard to ask the questions that are posing. You know, really challenging questions of this this Curry defence, the pack, the backs. You know, it looks like Curry at the moment certainly are in the ascendancy. They've got control and they look unflappable at the moment. Yeah, Hoyk almost a team stuck in the traffic jam that want to try and get through the gears and get away. So used to doing that, but unable to do so. Now this time Michael Todd has identified the squint throw. There was one aimed towards Ali McCallum a little bit earlier on from the other side of the pitch. I thought might have been a, a little bit skew with, but um, this time the uh, infringement at the throw-in has been identified by the referee. So presents Hoyt with a, another opportunity. And that's one thing that uh, Curry certainly won't want to do is give too many chances like this. So simple errors, whether it be handling errors, knocking on or squint throws in the line. They've got to ensure that all constituent parts are that bit tighter. Yeah, and uh, but it's a common thread in Curry's season. Their, their line out, it, the Mansfield fixture earlier in the season was was horrific. You know, they were, they were really inviting pressure from poor from poor throws at the line out and this time you know they've been able to add together different parts of their game to put a bit of pressure on Hoyk but Hoyk now ball in hand looking to try and launch an attack Brunton Riley off he goes up towards that uh, 22 Patterson in once more looking to recycle ball Linton taking the ball forward trying to make some ground Patterson getting back to his feet and Hoyk back into position as they look to spread the ball back inside and taken on well there by Callum Rennick. The back row forward, open side, into the 22. Brunton has it once more. Hoyt looking to put a little bit more pace on the, the pass of the ball here as Andrew Mitchell now takes the ball into the 22. He's tackled and floored. Patterson in behind him. On now to the hugely experienced Sean Muir. We want to add to his uh, trophies with Hoyt success of course in getting to the 2015 cup final as Linton now appears on that left hand side and of course on that left hand side was Cody McGovern with the tackle, Curry trying to flow the Hoyt men as they come onto the ball at the moment, Patterson looking to mop up and Hoyt going once again it's taken on this time with Dalton Redpath in that second row for Hoyt this afternoon along with Connor Sutherland back it comes towards Brunton, Brunton into Rennick, Rennick trying to splinter through that Curry defence, close towards those posts, Graham's in just behind him, back it comes now towards Riley outside centre again, he's tackled short of that 5 metre line and the referee just uh, signalling that after playing some advantage, Hoyt infringing but back they will come again and the referee at walking pace as the Hoyt supporters aware that we're closing in on half time, just over 2 minutes until the interval. Yeah, Hoyt were guilty of sealing off there when uh, Riley kind of ran out of options, they were going the same way, the Hoyt the Curry managed to have defenders round, Riley did well to secure the ball but I think it was Nicky Little just a judge to have been sealing that ball off, they come back for the penalty and we know what's going to happen here, we know that Hoyt are going to try and stick it into the corner, they're going to try that drive and line out again and get over that whitewash for the first time in the game for them. Yeah, so it's back now with Kirk Ford, Ford the uh, Hoyt player to have slotted over three points in the first half, Rennick's already in position, he'll be standing just in front of a, a clump of snow cleared just earlier on by the ground staff and forward come those in the Hoyt line as Rennick now looking for an accurate throw. 
very mindful of the, the tactics that Hoyt will look to try and adopt here as Rennick almost sort of walks in to the drive just on the angle. Referee Michael Todd moving around. You can see how close that they were to the line as they've just been held up over that try line. They were creeping closer, but uh, Curry themselves didn't behave as if they were concerned that uh, Hoyt had got a clean grounding of the ball there. But certainly Hoyt getting closer and closer to scoring the first try in this final. That's a huge gamble from Curry to compete at that line out five metres from your own line, but they opted for the right option. They made it a difficult catch for Dalton Redpath in the line out, and when it's been brought down, they've been able to target the ball very, very quickly to make sure that that ball's not going to feed its way through that mall to the back of the mall, and then Hoyt have all the cards. They've got the control. So Curry, great in terms of the aerial battle there at the line out. That's maybe not firing for them when they've got the ball in hand, but certainly defensively, that's a, a, a great application of uh, you know defence for Curry there close to their own line and Gregor Christie this time he's watched Patterson feed the ball into many a stub Patterson gives him a little shove Christie gets back to his feet there the two just jockeying for position as Curry looked to pick up Brunton with the, the tackle just trying to slow up Curry's e possible exit from inside the 22 just now as we're eating into the final seconds of the first half Ian Sims try the significant score you could say in the, the first half but two penalties from Jamie Forbes, a response to the first from Kirk Ford had levelled the game at three points all but uh, since then it's been the, the Mulleny Park side with the scores and they're just eating up the clock at the moment inside their own 22 it's, uh, it's been a certainly close first half the ball going loose there and Hoyt were able to spring up with possession of the ball the referee happy for play to continue as Hoyt with the turnover opportunity now an opportunity, Muir again, trying to lead his men inside the Curry 22. Curry perhaps gifting Hoyka a chance, but some good work from Hoyt. Riley again, tries to straighten up, running into the fly half there. And a good tackle coming from Jamie Forbes. Runs back with Patterson. Patterson then looking, and it's taken on this time by Dalton Redpath. And a few metres he could gallop into there before he was flattened. Patterson then glancing to the left and right a few times. Ups for Jay Linton, the Hoyt number eight. Carrying up closer towards the five metre line. Mopped up, but it's been picked up there. Loose bobbling ball. Curry men behind were able to secure possession of the ball. Close it off then. So we're eating into time as the clock is in the red. And precious few stoppages in the first 40 minutes. Penalty awarded then as the referee raising the arms that the ball was taken into contact there. Hoyt were uh, closing off the, the Curry men. You can see the second row forward, Ewan Stewart back to his feet. There was no exit for Stewart. And uh, we'll see what Hoyt opt to do as Patterson nonchalantly standing with the uh, ball under the arm. And again, they no surprise, Kit Ford going to the corner. No, and I think Hoyt are really fortunate that they've got this decision because, well, in, in hindsight, because Patterson slowed the pace right, right down, which allowed Curry to set their defence which meant that they were, they, were, they were having to just use brawn more than anything else to get over the line. They eventually got stripped of the ball, but you know, able to compete on the floor and, and get the ball back, get the penalty and target the line-out. And they've won the line-out, now we'll see what uh, Hoyt can do here as uh, Rennick looking to try and join in the drive. Hoyt getting closer towards the line, can they get a clean grounding? Todd then raises the arm and Hoyt finally find a way across the dry line on the stroke of half-time to give them more than a foothold back into the contest. 11-8 with the kick to come. A little coming together of players as the assistant uh, involves himself across on that stand side. And Curry will be absolutely furious with themselves that uh, the, um, those two players uh, had opportunities still to exit from that 22 didn't do so and Hoyt now seemed to have the bit between the teeth right in half time yeah it was, uh, it was definitely one of the Rennicks that got the score it would be interesting what Todd's Michael Todd the referee is just asking a couple of the, the players back for a conversation Sean Muir the one of them and perhaps to control the, the team who rushed on to celebrate the try however back to the rugby point of view it just shows you what a bit of exerted pressure gives to you play rugby in the right areas you're inviting the opposition to make mistakes you're inviting them to just create that little error, that little gap in their defence or their judgement to have the opportunity. And that's what Hoyt did. They've been second best for about 35 minutes of this first half. But right at the death, they get over, they get that score. And Kirk Ford can almost make it a one-point game. Yeah, Ford with the, the ball on the tee. The pressure. Curry themselves will be kicking themselves that they were unable to clear the lines because they were gifted that opportunity when the ball was spilled. 
and they couldn't get out of their own 22 and they were made to, to pay conceding five points could well be seven here all eyes then on the fly half on the fullback I should say maybe it should have been the fly half having a go on this occasion Kurt Fordan characteristic mistake there from the Hoyk fullback a missed conversion wide of the uprights Hoyt then trailing at half time by 11 points to 8 but uh, Dale we've seen uh, two contrasting styles two well executed tries in the first half and a game that's very much in the melting pot definitely I think it's been an intriguing it's been an interesting final it's been it's been pretty much what you would want in a final you've got the essentially the underdogs Curry who finished second in the regular campaign they came out all guns blazing took the game to Hoyk for about half an hour 35 minutes you know they were able to ride the, the wave of the, the yellow card they were able to get their noses in front during that time as well and they scored a really well executed try but like teams do that are wanting to be champions he can get away back into the game we're not playing well and that's exactly what Hoyk have done they've not played well got themselves in an attractive position get the try at the death, at the death and, and make it a narrower gap at half time so let's take a look at some highlights of the first half uh, Curry then opened the scoring in the early stages with Jamie Forbes slotting over the first of his two penalty goals but within two minutes this was the kick that levelled the game at three points all Kirk Ford Ford's penalty goal there levelling the match, now this penalty, they've encouraged the lead once more, 6 points to 3 at that stage in the game 14 and a half minutes on the clock and Curry were back in front now Curry had an opportunity here as the, the grubber kick into the height 22, they were giving chase, the full back and right winger were up with play, Brett and McGovern and Hoyt did just enough to ensure that uh, Curry were unable to get a, a clean grounding of the ball the, the full commitment they are shown particularly by Ethan Riley in his role at outside centre but Curry themselves scoring a, a fine try in the first half this is the end of the move Ian Simmett started off Dale with a, a fine piece of running by Chris Anderson is almost his last involvement in the game before bringing the Curry midfield into the contest yeah he broke from the, the halfway line I don't know if he's been withdrawn over shock I think it's uh, perhaps his symptom but it was a well worked try from uh, Curry there managed to manipulate the defence but Hoyt now doing what Hoyt do best got themselves in a great position driving Mull and you can see there it was Fraser Rennick they got the try uh, at the, the end of the first half yeah, Fraser Rennick, this score coming practically on the half-time whistle and bringing Hoyt back to within three points of Curry. Of course, they've had very much the upper hand this season when the sides have met in recent times. There's been some emphatic wins. You go back to January 2021, 20, I think it was. Hoyt uh, 2023, 20, Hoyt 43, Curry 7. And uh, Curry 25, Hoyt 46. Uh, back in October but yeah that game uh, back in January 2023 was Hoyt 43 Curry 7 so Hoyt have certainly enjoyed fine afternoons against the Millennium Park side but uh, this afternoon at the interval it's Curry who have a three point lead yeah definitely that game in, in January it was uh I think it was 36 nil at half time to Hoyk. You know that shows you the the turnaround that, that Curry have had. They've they've been able to change their team slightly, and I think the introduction of likes it Innes, it, Sim in there as well, Forbes and Charlie Brett. They weren't playing in that game, so you know there has been a, a change in terms of the personnel on that that pitch for for Curry, and they've shown their importance. The players like of Forbes pulling the strings, Sim scoring that try, and Innes. DJ Innes is at the centre of everything that Curry try to do in a back division, and they've just not let Hoyk play. Hoyt their strength is their forwards their forward domin dominance at set piece but also in the loose and in the loose Curry have matched them but in the set piece as well you know it's been an interesting battle and they've just not let Hoyt have the ball and suffocate it for long, long periods of time so certainly second half is going to be equally as interesting as what the first 40 has been yeah just a, a reminder of how we got to where we are of course there was an 18 match regulation season with Hoyt finishing top of the pile 17 wins one draw no defeats and uh, Curry finishing second place out of the, the 10 sides with 14 victories and 4 defeats. Curry then were too strong for the Edinburgh Aki's in the playoff semi final. 35 7 victory at Millennium Park. Hoyk themselves had a, a tough fixture against Marr in the, their semi final, eventually overcoming the West Coast side by 18 points to 6. And of course, we mentioned that, that neither side complete strangers to winning the domestic championship Hoyt winners back uh, 
12 occasions back as far back as 1974, the first season when there was a, a recognised structure to the division after it was un classed as an unofficial championship. They've enjoyed a, a double winning season as well back in 2002 when they lifted the cup final at Murrayfield in dramatic fashion that afternoon. 12 championships in all for Hoyk, two for Curry, the last of those coming in 2010. But it is the Mileni Park side with a slender lead at the interval. And they'll just a, a, a quick uh, thought on the respective dressing rooms and the, the conversations in there. Curry, I would imagine, will be frustrated at the number of mistakes that they have made when they've been in either the attacking positions or they've had opportunities to clear and, and prevent Hoyt from adding to their points tally. Yeah, I think it's interesting, you know, it's going to be completely different team tops, Curry will be wanting more of the same in the second half and Hoyt will be wanting something completely different what we've seen in the first 40 minutes. I think from a Hoyt point of view, although they've not played well, I think they'll be happy because if not played well and they're three points behind, they know they've got improvement within that squad. If they can just you know, introduce themselves to this game a little bit more than they have in the first half because they have been passengers for most of it. They've been second best on most of, you know, most of the key areas. They've not won the battle on the floor. They've perhaps not won the battle up front as much as they would have liked to. And certainly in defence, their first up tackling has been poor for a team that has one of the best defensive records in the Premiership. Curry, on the other hand, we did say at the beginning of the game, they've got nothing to lose. The pressure is completely off them, and they have taken the game to Curry and they'll be uh, to uh, Hoyk, sorry, and they'll be wanting more of the same in the second half. Keep attacking, keep trying to draw this big Hoyk pack in, and let's stretch the backs. Let's test them out wide and get our dangerous men into you know really dangerous areas. So ten minutes, the interval length, and an opportunity for those inside Mansfield Park just to make their way for some half-time refreshments but uh, I'd imagine that uh, there'll be one or two rather nervy supporters both in the Curry ranks and in the Hoyt ranks one or two Curry supporters coming down here maybe fearing that Hoyt would come out of the traps very quickly and try and mount up a, an early insurmountable lead that hasn't happened so it has them very much in the contest yeah it definitely does and I think that's been the game plan from Curry. it's been stop them in the first 10 minutes make sure they don't get their tails up try and silence this crowd and make sure that they don't get back behind their, their home charges and then there's a game to play and I feel that's exactly what Curry have done they've, they've been able to play this game almost perfectly in the opening exchanges because they've done everything right they've played rugby in the right areas up until the last five minutes they've silenced the crowd it has been very quiet we've seen that Jay Linton run you know from inside his own half that got the, the kind of spectators out of their seat but you know after that it's been it's been quite placid from the, the home side you've got to say they've uh, certainly not looked like the dominant force that they have been in the premiership campaign but that's what pressure does to teams that is what these occasions does to players the cream will rise to the top in the end and remember about 12, well, 11 months ago, when Mar played Curry, they were away from home. The visiting side were uh, ahead in that game at half time as well and went on to win. So, you know, it's certainly similar to what we uh, what we witnessed last year. Yeah, that was a real raucous atmosphere at the start of April at Mileni Park, full of colour and uh, full of emotion as well, particularly towards the end of the, the contest when, when Mar had opened up a lead that uh, they were simply not going to then lose in the, the final few minutes of the, the contest. Curry will be mindful of that, they won't want back-to-back -back defeats um, in their history in the last couple of years, getting as far as the playoff finals and losing, but you know, it shows a consistency despite the fact that they've made many changes in team selection and personnel have come and gone. Yeah, I was just looking at the team sheet before and you know, there was, there was about seven or eight players that were in that team last year that, that have remained at Curry, you know, that, that played in some capacity in that final. So there's been a lot of changes at the Curry Chieftains in terms of the, the players that they've got at their disposal, but you would say that, you know, they've, they've certainly enhanced the squad. And that's what you want to do. You know, they've, they've had a reaction from last year. Yes, the Premiership campaign perhaps never went the way that they wanted with losing four games, but everybody knows at the start of the campaign what you need to do to be Premiership champions. You need to win the Premiership final after a, a, the semi-final. And the players that they've brought in, they've learned from last year and they've certainly enhanced their squad and it's shown dividends now, certainly because they're leading at half-time in the final. Yeah, Hoyker, the, the first team out of the changing rooms for the start of the second half. One of the last players out is Andrew Mitchell, the inside centre. 
who was very quiet in the first half. I think he's one of the players that Curry will be aware of, you know, and he wasn't allowed to get the ball in hand and play rugby. So, you know, Hoyk will be looking for these key individuals to introduce himself back into this final because you feel that the likes of Mitchell and the Rennicks as well and Jay Linton, they were kept under wraps in the first half. And he was an, another sort of teenager in Hoyk that was making a name for himself, making some headlines as a sort of 14, 15, 16 year old. And he's, you know, stuck with the club. He's had uh, a bit of time part of the, the Southern Knights and, uh, of course, is a Club 15 player. The, the pantomime booing is a uh, little more audible now than it was at uh, the start of the game when Curry made their way back onto the pitch for the, the start of this second period. But it's a, a huge 40 minutes for both these sides. Hoyt looking for a, a 13th championship, Curry a third and as we mentioned, since the introduction of the Super 6, it's really be, been a boost for Hoyt because prior to that, they were occupying players' places in the lower reaches of the Premiership, often in playoff finals, um, those, you know, National 1 Premiership playoff finals, but relegation threatened playoff finals, if you not understand my, my thinking. Yeah, but both teams are back at this occasion and it's it's 40 minutes. It's now 40 minutes to see who's going to be crowned the Premiership champions and the history that's gone before them. They can put it to the pass if, they, if they're able to get it over the line. Yeah, it's a winner-take-all situation there as Rhys Davis, the, the curry skipper, trying to gain some ground up towards the edge of his own 22. Recycle ball taken on once more by Ali McCallum. Christie, once again, little grubber kick through given chase, that's a high challenge coming in there when it was uh, over the ball now coming in the Hoyt hooker, Gareth Welsh has come on at the start of the second half and Welsh, it was, I think Fraser Rennick actually involved in that high challenge and Welsh su supporting no, it was Welsh who was the, the tackle player and here comes Rennick now in fact so right the first time so a high challenge going to be penalised immediately by Michael Todd, the referee. It's an interesting replacement from Hoyt to, to bring Welsh off the bench for Patterson. Obviously, a, a Patterson, a, a young scrum half, who played his, his, his junior rugby at Jed, uh, Jed Thistle. And he now plays in, in Hoyt, obviously. And he's maybe been a bit too pragmatic in the first half, not played at pace, which Gareth Welsh does bring you behind that pack. So you know, obviously they've seen that at half time, want to change their game plan. And Hoyt going to get out of the traps quickly, and this is a chance for Kurt Ford to make it all square. And it's uh, going to be an interesting 38 minutes after that. And Gareth Welsh, that little bit more experienced, 69 appearances, 23 year old. Now, if Kurt Ford can add the three points here, it would give Hoyt the lead for the first time in the contest. Takes a couple of steps back, clean strike of the ball, crowd watching it in flight, and Hoyt are in front by 12 points to 11, courtesy of that penalty goal from Kurt Ford. I think um, that'll, uh, that'll certainly tie it because it's going to be Hoyk 11, oh, Curry sorry, 3. Yes, I, it's I, right, I, it's usually I, me that does the math wrong, Stuart, so I'm glad I can dig you out a hole, but it's, uh, yeah, that's an interesting penalty kick there because, you know, I think in terms of game management, that must be the message at half-time. Scoreboard pressure, let's put it on, and that's exactly what they've done straight away at half-time. Yes, yeah, so apologies there, it is 11 all rather than 12-11 to, to Hoyk. So it levels the game. So Hoyk have been level from the, the three off from the Kurt Ford penalty that levelled it up, up at three points all early in that first half after Curry had taken a very early lead but they're back now on level terms and no four point penalties in this playoff final There's many a sound bite of me getting my math wrong so <laughs> I, was, uh, I thought that was an easy one for me Yep, so level pegging then, 11 points all Curry with the, the throw in again a wasn't throw from Curry in the line out. Now that will just add to their frustration, which has been a disappointing start to the second period. And immediately you can see Gareth Welsh spinning the ball in his hands, looking just to try and exercise his right to do his best as a scrum half, feeding the ball in to this Hoyt scrum. So the home side of a little bit of a spring in the step at the start of the second period. Yeah, Welsh has got a bit of a swagger on him, you know, when he's got the ball in hand and, and momentum is a huge thing in sport, no matter what sport it is. And, you know, th that penalty, you know, winning that penalty in a, in a really good position and then, you know, getting that, for the, the, the benefit of the squint line out, that brings momentum. So it's, uh, you know, just adding to the twists and turns of this battle. Welsh into the scrum. Rather just at the, the base of the scrum and Hoyk then 
looking for the measured crossfield kick. One bounce and into touch across on that far side, but the referee's going to bring play back for a, an early, earlier infringement close towards the, the halfway line. Yeah, just dominance at the scrum again from Hoyk up front, being able to just nudge Curry back, and then they win the penalty. They know they've got a free ball, and you could see Ronan McKean on the on the touchline. He had his hand up. He was screaming for that crossfield kick, and Kirk for uh, sorry Kyle Brunton just noticed that there was space there. Tried to put a kind of high range spiral kick in for Ronan McKean to run on, uh, but it dribbled out. But they had the advantage, and now they've got the ball to throw into the line out. Yeah, just on the edge of the 22, Rennick comes across reading himself. 11 points all, all square in this tenants Premiership playoff final with the Kirk Ford penalty goal coming in the opening two minutes of the second half to level the, the scores after Hoyt had scored the try through. The man throwing in Fraser Rennick right on the stroke of half-time. Movement in the line, works its way towards the back. It's won by Jay Linton, taken on then by Rennick, trying to run onto that ball at pace. It's loose, it's been picked up there by Curry and they're able to scoop things up. Christie then looking to try and get some of his forwards into play to return the ball with a little bit of interest. Ewan Stewart was able to carry up towards the edge of the 22. Now Curry looking to try and spread the ball wide. They've been able to bring... Charlie Brett back into play Brett not quite a touch finder gobbled up there by Kirk Ford on now towards you can see Charlie Welsh looking for the, the cross field kick but that's been guarded by Ian Sim Sim then reads what's in front of him and works his way up towards the halfway line he's tackled but in comes Christy now and it's recycled ball taken on this time by the skipper Reese Davis close towards that the halfway line 11 all the, the score line in the game little grubber kick it's now a loftier kick this time from the, the fly half, gathered on the edge of the Hoyt 22. A bit of a kicking game at the moment. As Ford then plays downfield and a real misunderstanding there from two of the curry backs. A solid collision involving Charlie Brett. Real misunderstanding, no communication, no verbal communication there as both players were uh, watching the flight of the ball and not communicating with one another. Yeah, it's a, a very sizeable crowd here at Mansfield Park and I think there was only two people that couldn't see that was coming and that happened to be Brett and Christie because it was a, a, a good clearance kick, it became that war, the kind of battle, the aerial battle with the ball, you know, in terms of the kicking battle and just Christie not watching where his opposition was his, his teammate was, Brett not communicating either and that is always that's always Brett's ball. He was in the position there to gather that ball and command his area and clear his lines. And, and what happened was they collided together, well controlled by Christie, kicked downfield. But again, Hoyk are starting to play a little bit more clever. You know, they're, they're, they're starting tactically to pin them in the right areas. Brunton's kicking more, Ford is kicking more, and they're looking to try and get themselves in these areas that they can try and force errors from Curry, which Curry now are finding it hard to get out of. Yeah, and these errors are beginning to build up in number and uh, if this continues you feel it's it's going to be costly for Curry and uh, Hoyker reading the situations maybe that little bit better than they were in the first half it is all square at 11 all but uh, Curry will want to, to try and reverse the fortunes sooner rather than later I mean they're still very much in the contest but you just feel that the, the pendulum is beginning to swing more towards the home side for the, the first time in, in a a, a fair amount of time in the game. Yeah, I, t I totally agree with you, Stuart. I think that, you know, Hoyk have come out the second half, a, a slightly changed team. You know, they look like they've got a little bit more hunger and a little bit more composure. But the, the beauty of this battle is these are the, the two best teams in Scottish club rugby. And at any given moment, if there's a lapse in concentration, such as that one there, you know, that can be the time where the other team exploits it. So the fact that it's all square, 11 points all after 48 minutes, means that, you know, it's going to be a, a long, long period in the game that they both need to concentrate and this time the Hoyk line out comes back on the Curry side with Rennick's throw picked up now eventually by Curry and they look for the outside centre DJ and is scampering away little offload on towards this right hand side a fine piece of running there as McGovern is clawed down by the back of the net there the referee playing advantage now for Curry opportunity for them to spread the ball out wide Reese Davis now up towards the edge of the 22 taken on there by Gregor Nelson Still on the edge of the 22, referee are just allowing Curry to work the ball across the part there inside that 22. So Curry now looking to try and snaffle possession deeper inside Hoyt 22 territory. The Hoyt players trying to get back to their feet, back and organised as the momentum had dropped slightly, but the referee 
will come back I think for that high challenge there McGovern was caught kind of round the uh, the back of the neck almost in the, in the tackle inside the 22 but uh, Curry somehow found a way to come to life very quickly just as we were calling them to do so yeah it was a, it was the most delicate of high tackles you'll ever see in rugby because Dalton Redpath was just stretching every last bit to try and grab onto uh, McGovern's shirt and uh, there was no malice in it he had no other option he had to grab something and he just had to grab onto the collar and uh, it's going to be interesting to see the decision here but we had just been speaking about how one lapse in concentration a little bit of inaccuracy from a team can open the door and it's the uh, the missed line out and straight down the other side yeah. Curry go he's going to his pocket and the home crowd are not happy with this he's speaking to Sean Muir the yellow card shown near to red path so Hoyk have lost the services then of 26 year old Dalton Redpath to a yellow card yeah I don't, I don't think they can really argue I think he had, he had no other options it wasn't malicious and it wasn't dangerous but in the letter of the law it was high so it's going to be a yellow card and you know he's, he's probably you know fortunate that it's went out that way but it's a huge blow Dalton Redpath along with Daniel Sudden who came back from the night have been instrumental in, in Hoyk's season and he's, a, he's an absolute mountain of a man to lose especially in these positions where Hoyt, uh, Curry will be looking to attack uh, Ryan Stewart uh, they worked the ball short towards the line and latching onto it very quickly there was Stuart Graham and tempers beginning to free maybe just ever so slightly as we're eating into this second half I've played a full 10 minutes so Hoyt will be down a man having lost the services of the lock forward and Curry having weathered something of a storm right at the tail end of the first half and for most of these 10 minutes in the second period we'll want this to be the opportunity for that pendulum we're talking about to swing back towards them yeah a bit of inaccuracy at the line out but they, fortunately it's came back on a curry side for them because Stuart Graham tried to just pounce on that loose ball and he just knocked it on in the, in the act of trying to secure that because defensively it was desperate from Hoyk but they looked like they had done everything but another scrum here, Hoyk a man down, they've lost that size from Redpath so this again will be an interesting battle Christy then into the scrum, works his way around towards the back Rhys Davis, the captain is number 8, almost slipping in the mud there but he was able to bring Forbes into play and stumbling and losing his footing, Cody McGovern Again, that was a, a an expensive mistake there, or, or slip rather than a mistake, just losing the footing. But Curry were very much on the front foot, and now Hoyk are able to find a way of getting outside of the 22. And the collision between, I think it was uh, Brett and Christie moments earlier inside the 22, and that slip there from Cody McGovern, and these occasions and certainly not helping Curry's cause just at the moment as Hoyt work it back towards Brunton there's that nice casual stroking kick downfield and it's been picked up now outside the Curry 22 and Brett goes on and has a little look at his options tries a couple of goose steps runs into contact right on that halfway line in behind Curry looking to mop up and recycle ball 11 points all then the pass goes loose Curry playing a little bit of football Hoyt are able to retrieve possession inside their own half of the field, now they're looking to spread the ball wide with this left hand side off goes Ronan McKean who's been a, a quieter figure, goes to the ground, recycle picked up there by Mitchell on then towards Sean Muir, Muir then between that 10 and 22 picked up then by the replacement scrum half, Fraser Rennick then shown great determination, Rennick loses possession of the ball there as the tackle came in from Charlie Brett and the ball is hacked away but uh, that was a, a great opportunity there for Hoyk having uh, watched Curry work a position, a rather fruitful position it seemed to be inside the Hoyt 22, the slip from Cody McGovern, then moments later Hoyt find themselves and find Fraser Rennick escaping the attentions of the Curry defence and gaining ground inside the Curry 22, yeah. remains 11 all. Great break but great defence from Brett to get his hand round because it was him that ended up knocking on the ball for Fraser Rennick essentially with that flapping arm when he was wrapping round so again great play from Hoyk once they've got their tails up they look to try and keep the tempo going uh, Ronan McKean was they were crying on the ball to be kicked downfield but they showed patience kept the ball in hand and Fraser Rennick now being withdrawn for Ross Graham who'll settle in at the hooker position for Hoyk and it's not a bad replacement to have as well a, a player of huge experience coming onto the field of play so scrummage then inside the 22 the Curry 22 Hoyk then playing 
towards the town as Curry heading towards Burnfoot and the spectators on the banking many of them now well I think they've been able to clear away that snow having thrown a few snowballs but now the tension very much on the action on the pitch as Curry then looking to secure hands in the ball a solid challenge coming in there on Jamie Forbes who's prostrate on the pitch at the moment as Curry have worked to play up back towards the, the 10 metre line they recycle ball once more and it's uh, Gregor Nelson that takes the ball into contact Christie in behind him the stricken Curry player going back to his feet as uh, the battering ram this time is Ewan Stewart trying to make the ground up towards the, the 10 metre line Curry almost deliberate trying to ensure that they're better handling of the ball there's no knock-ons you can see that Gareth Wells has done well to try and secure a turnover much to the delight of the big Mansfield Park crowd and the penalty then awarded and the warm applause there from the Hoyt forwards on the pitch because they've done very well indeed but credit too to Gareth Welsh who has certainly more than made a contribution since coming on the pitch and Hoyt this time will go for the post and Gail if this is successful they will be in front. I think Gareth Welsh has changed the complexion of the game over the last 14 minutes because it was his pass that released Ronan McKean to get them into that position where Fraser Rennick almost scored it was his turnover there you know he's brought that just that little bit more urgency than pa that Patterson was not bringing in the first half and it's just given them a different dynamic this Hoyt team and remember they're down to 14 men they've lost the services of red path for the time being so this would be again a similar turnaround to what Curry had in the first half when they were the man down they managed to get some points and get their noses in front so it's uh, certainly been a, a really interesting last few minutes here at Mansfield Park yeah that yellow card about uh, four and a half minutes left on the, the yellow card as we're watching on Kirk Ford arms by his sides just beyond that 10 metre line glancing up at the posts onto the tiptoes then steps forward clean strike for the ball and there's the three points that will give Hoyt the lead 14 points to 11 55 minutes gone and Hoyt for the first time in this tenants premiership final find themselves in front now could that be significant or can Curry find a way to get themselves back on level terms or back in front in the final it's a fine seesaw of affair it's a difficult game when you're chasing and uh, Hoyk are a, a really difficult team to try and chase down when they've got their noses in front but again Curry doing the right thing getting the ball deep inside the, the Hoyt 22 asking Hoyt to play out but the forwards here managing just to secure the ball and getting a good position for Ford to clear downfield yeah, Wells for that pass down towards Ford and that's a touch finder across on that far side outside of the 22 throwing on the Curry left can he remain fairly relaxed on the bench through the backroom staff in conversation 14-11 then to Hoyk can he throw in he's got to get this line out right and they've been able to do so on this oh no they haven't the referee signalling another infringement at the throw and these are mounting up and you have to see if it remains a close final deal that Curry are, are going to look back on numerous occasions where they've gifted possession back to Hoyk when uh, they, they were under no immediate pressure. Yeah, and, and Ryan Stewart is a, a very competent hooker. The thing that perhaps does let him down is his throw-in because on various occasions here they've, they've not been able to hit their target there's been a lot of squint throws, there's been a lot of overthrows but that a lot of the time does come down to the hooker, it's not the jumpers on that occasion because it's a squint throw so you know it's uh, it's an interesting dynamic of this game but in terms of the line out set piece for, uh, for Curry it's been absolutely criminal this afternoon So the man that really has given the game a, a different complexion Gareth Welsh readying himself to feed the ball into the scrum that's not to discredit in any way the contribution of Hector Patterson in that first half because uh, as a youngster an 18 year old he's, he's certainly more than made a, a valuable contribution as the starting scrum half in this final it'll be a, a great experience for him part of the learning process and training with the, the Scotland under 20s so Welsh feeds the ball in works it towards the, the base of the scrum that pass just goes out a little bit loose and misunderstanding there Brunton was trying to get hands on the ball and Hoyt falls backwards now Curry looking for a, a turnover opportunity 
Kirk have done just enough to shore off possession of the ball. The referee trying to ensure that Curry players don't stray offside. And again, a bit of a hospital pass, and Hoyk are able to play downfield, but it's not a touch find. It's picked up by Ian Sim, tries to score it in the first half, tries to slalom his way up and beyond that. 22 goes to ground on the 22. Curry looking to recycle ball again. Quite a quiet Mansfield Park at the moment as Christie again recycles ball through the hands there of Forbes of Lie Half up towards the 22. Curry will go again. Christie in, on in towards Forbes. Flatter pass then with Greg Canney and DJ Ennis in that midfield for Curry. Looking to recycle another phase, this time inside the 22. They'll maybe have to exit momentarily. Back to the tall, rangy figure there of Cairn Ramsey. And he is inside the 22. Back it comes towards Forbes. This time it's Canny, who is a Canny operator on that left hand side. Inside the 22, they're back. And looking to recycle again. On this time towards Jamie Drummond. Curry once more. Determination shown then from Forbes as he's trying to accelerate up towards that five metre line. Recycle ball, Innes. Weighs up the options, closing down, he's now within the final three metres. Can he looking for an end product here? A little uh, passage of play working at central, close to being underneath those posts. Can he again just forced backwards ever so slightly? Boyk on the defensive, three point advantage. Can he trying to press home the issue at the moment with this uh, territorial advantage? You can see how close they are towards the line, the referee Michael Todd squatting down to see if they've been held up and Hoyt's defence coming good there as you have to say Curry were trying to stretch them this way and that as the yellow card 10 minutes has now come and gone and Dalton Redpath is applauded back onto the field it was persistent it was it was composed from Curry they got themselves in a great position underneath the sticks Ian Sim tried something different he came off his wing and looked to try and go short and really burst over the line great defence but then again Nelson came round the corner and he was driven back and that perhaps was when the opportunity had, had just went away from Curry he tried to go again but it allowed Hoyt to reset their defensive line and then the hold up here allows it Hoyt to a, a drop out from their goal line and a couple of replacements coming on as well one of them for Hoyt Lewis Ferguson who's got nine tries so far this season so certainly bringing some experience off the bench and a couple of replacements for Curry as well Adam Hall and Paddy Boyer coming on yeah, Boyer of course was on when Curry were trying to engineer an opening for a, an early try scored by Ian Sim and that was, of course was when Gregor Christie was yellow carded so from the goal line drop out Curry again looking through Greg Carney to work it up towards the edge of the 22 back it comes Forbes on then towards Drummond scurrying great determined figure squat figure up into the 22 he goes mopped up Curry have possession again in that 15 channel in the, the Curry left hand side they're working down towards the left hand side bringing Ian Sim in again and getting close towards the line tremendous determination shown by Ian Sim Southern next player of the spell with Kelso as well. Spectators rushing down the line. You see how close they are towards the line. Curry again pressing and probing this out defence. Hoyt having to defend desperately here. As Curry trying to find a way over the try line close towards the corner. A try would give them the advantage in the contest. You can see Drummond over the ball just in front of them. The ball carriers now. Again, they're getting ever so close towards that Hoyt trial in the pick and go, looking at the, the referee, he's squatted down, and like you saying, they've been held up, but uh, Curry again, time after time there, they're pressing that try line, and Hoyt doing just enough to repel them. Yeah, definitely, defensively, Hoyt have been really strong in those close quarters, which is, you know, it's no surprise, they've got a great defensive record throughout their campaign, but, you know, Curry are physical, they're you know, really dynamic ball carriers, so Hoyker having to work really, really hard to keep them at bay, but get themselves in really good positions, but perhaps just verging on the side of caution there, because they're the other side of it, because Michael Todd has just spotted that, I think Hoyker just strayed offside slightly, and it's going to give the penalty to Curry, so there's uh, no let-up in the pressure, because Curry have got a decision to make here.
here as to what they want to do. Do they have a puff at the post or scrum or go to the corner because it's in one of those positions that you could probably go for all three. Yeah, going for the posts would level at 14 all. Going for the corner, which looking at the position of the, the fly have Jamie Ford. Yes, they are indeed going to ping that one towards the front of the, the banking there. And now is when your line, your line out has to be accurate now. So it's not been a, a strong point for Curry, but it's at this point that it needs to be on the money. Throwing towards the front. That was the first option, not to put uh, too much distance on the throw if it was to be a little squint. Allows them to get a, a bit of a drive on here, Curry as well. White players beginning to peel away and regroup as Curry again showing determination here, looking to try and perhaps spread the ball into a more central portion of that 22. Referee again, Michael Todd is taking a few steps back as Curry looked to press and probe, use their forwards. It's a, a full forwards effort here from Curry just now, coming into the, the picture there, wearing 20 is Paddy Boyer and his experience is going to be crucial he looked at kick the ball towards the corner and again the referee just allowing them the option to play the advantage as uh, there was a, a few spectators inside this main stand sitting on the edge of the seats on the streets and for the valley yeah i thought ronan mckean had just got himself in a, a good position to gather that ball but just outstretched them and the knock on came on the on the flank there for curry but they've got the advantage they know they have that free ball so you know, when, you've, when you're in those positions, if you do get penalty advantage, you can pretty much do what you want because you, you can throw caution into the wind. But, and that's exactly what Curry did there. Crossfield kick, thought, let's roll the dice. Uh, just not coming on for them at that time. But again, just kick to the corner and their driving ball is, is really, really dangerous. Still a long way to go in this game, but if they can get their noses in front, it gives them, you know, a little bit of comfort and something to hold on to. With the cloud also on for Hoyt, so a fresh pair of legs. Now again, the line out is straight. Referee is happy with it. That towards the, the front of the line Curry again looking to try and get some acceleration on here again they've got uh, an advantage coming their way as they're close towards uh, the touch line they want to try and regroup Boyer just having a look at the options just towards the inside they're not wanting to spread the ball too far and too wide just at the moment as Hoyk again jockeying for position and uh, the penalty so they're coming at regular intervals now against Hoyk who have a slender lead, 14 points to 11 and into the final 15 minutes of this tennis Premiership final Yeah, discipline wise, oh, Hoyk have had you know, they've got 8 players in that start and line up that, well, 8 players in the squad that have had yellow cards this season Dalton Redpath adding to his tally as well so they need to keep their discipline here but it looks like Dalton Redpath has been yellow carded again which means he's been sent off so Hoyk are going to have to battle it out with 14 men which is a huge moment in this game yeah, Dalton Redpath as cutting a disconsolate figure there as you can see him looking towards that main stand as he works his way around behind those posts and Dalton Redpath, 70 appearances for Hoyk and his shoulders are slumped and he's heading round those posts he'll be nothing more than a spectator now for the, the rest of the game Hoyk down to 14 men for the remaining 15 minutes of the contest and Hoyt though defensively have done enough, they've sucked in Curry, forced them into the mistake, that will be little consolation to Dalton Redpath just at the moment but Hoyt can breathe again just for the moment at least. They definitely can because it was it was really well defended, it gives Hoyt the opportunity to clear the lines from a scrum and you can see how much it meant to Connor Sutherland is second row, Dalton Redpath's second row partner who was celebrating as if they'd won the game because they knew how important that defensive phase was. They were able just to hold Curry up when they were you know, come, going to the line which looked like it was a, a, certainly a, a positive kind of foray in to, towards that goal line area. Hoyt did well to defend it and they get the chance now to try and clear their lines but this is going to be a, an interesting and really intriguing end to this fixture because it's the 15 men of Curry against the 14 men of Hoyt. Watch on here, well, historically 15 14, and it's a lot 14 15, I suppose, with White having home advantage. So the historical reference maybe doesn't mean so much now. The Horns Hole battle it was uh, just uh, played out down the road. And it's Hoyt now watching on Welsh, biding his time, picked up just at the base. Hoyt still inside the 22. There's still a long way to go in the game as they're looking to try and exit. 
and they're able to put a, a bit of height on that kick but distance wise it remains inside the 22 and Curry again Dale they've got to ensure that from now until the end of the game their set play in particular the line out works without fault yeah definitely their line out has been really accurate after uh, scathed it about 5-10 minutes ago but since then it has been really really accurate in really dangerous areas so it's it's certainly working for Curry and that's what they need to do they need to make sure they keep hitting their line out keep hitting their targets and they, they can certainly you know, take advantage of, of any opportunities that come their way but not able to clear their lines as much as they'd like to hoik there still camped inside their 22 and the Curry spectators on the side are now flocking down to the, the, the advertising hoardings on the side to try and nudge their, their, their team over the line and just give them that little bit more encouragement and there'll be just that little bit more space on the pitch with Hoik been down a man we'll see if in the line out well it's a shot stab thrown towards the, the front of the line the ground is stationary but Curry now looking to try and get a, a little bit of momentum going on here the ball tucked under the arms there of their hooker and Paddy Boyer now comes in looking to try and accelerate into the 22 wrestling his way towards the line forced backwards and forced into the knock on and Hoy are shown a streetwise nature to their game as the clock ticks down Ten and a half minutes of the game left to play. Hoyk 14, Curry 11. But for much of the last ten minutes, the game has been played out deep inside the Hoyk 22. Yeah, I think that was uh, Paul and Innes just getting caught in the wrong position there. Ian Sim came off his wing, made some really good inroads in towards the the Hoyk defensive area, and then it was uh, it was Hall and Innes who just had a little bit of a mix up in midfield and it was knocked on, but. We're just in the, it's Groundhog Day pretty much because we're in the same position, in the same area. Hoyt have to get this scrum right and they have to try and get themselves in a good position that they can clear their lines and try and relieve that pressure somewhat. Paul and Innes, you would imagine that uh, in the future they could go into uh, any number of businesses there. They could be pharmacists, they could be estate agents, and the possibilities are endless. I think they go for a brewery. <laughs> yes. Watching on now is Hoyt. Supporters are encouraged by the efforts here in the scrum. Penalty awarded. And the spectators are aware of the, the task at hand here as they're protecting a lead, but they're looking to try and exit that uh, 22 and ease the pressure on themselves. They've certainly not been at their free-flowing best, and it's hard to believe that uh, these sides have played out uh, two on paper, more one-sided contests, 43 points to seven in January down here at Mansfield Park and Curry 25.46 in October but a much closer affair with this being a winner-takes-all Premiership final. Yeah, that's 89-32 in aggregate so you know, in terms of if you've not watched rugby or not been paying attention to the Premiership then you would think this was going to be a, a, a kind of one-horse race and it was going to be the, the green machine to get their hands around that trophy but although they're in front just now they've certainly got a lot of work to do with being down to 14 men but they've done well to relieve the pressure, get out of their own area inside the 22. Yeah, Stuart Graham doing well to win the ball in the line out. Hoyt have it uh, again, somewhat stationary down towards halfway, looking to recycle Welsh directing operations at scrum half. And once more, Sean Muir, who played to the very end, runners up medal in the cup final of 2015, box kick from Welsh, inviting a bit of pressure. One gathered by Curry, but they're back inside their own half of the field between the, the 10 and 22. They'll want reassured hands here. The ball goes loose, but it's picked up on the bounce here. And Curry now running into Jay Linton there, one of their replacements. Adam Hall in towards Linton with the tackle. This slightly delayed pass there from Will Ingalls and Curry getting back up towards the halfway line. Boyer once more on towards Forbes, out towards Canny on that uh, left hand side, inside centre is bundled to the ground. Curry looking to recycle again through Paddy Boyer, picked up then by Rhys Davis, the number eight. Tries to escape the tensions up towards the halfway line. Penalty awarded, offside decision, and then Hoyt are. Uh, backpedalling inside their own half as Curry are looking for an opportunity to pin this one deep inside the Hoyk half of the field into the final seven and a half minutes a three point game Dalton Redpath on a red card Curry an opportunity here for them to get further downfield there yeah defensively Hoyk are almost not trusting their defence they're, they're trying a little bit too hard to 
you know, sneak up and, and edge it, but Curry can't find touch. Kirk Ford kicks downfield. Well, that was good effort there as Carney is able to again read the bounce of the ball and it's a slapped effort into touch in between that 10 and 22 and uh, Curry there thought they were onto a good thing but Hoyt doing tremendously well to keep the ball in play and they're eating into the, the final moments and what's interesting as well is because the clock starts at 40 and ticks down it's uh, an even clearer perhaps illustration of just how long is left in the game so Hoyk just taking their time they've got the throw in at the line out this time and it will be Aaron Cameron who will throw the ball in uh, rather it will be Ross Graham that will throw the ball in Aaron Cameron is opposite number in the carry jersey long throw in one by Jay Linton at the back of the line and in goes Ross Graham once more Graham, ball tucked under the arm. Curry then looking for an opportunity to strip as Hoyt have it once more. Taken on this time by their left winger, peeling off his wing and doing well was Ronan McKean. Ball is recycled. Little grubber kick played there by Ford. Intercepted. Curry now are up and over halfway. Good solo run here, the, the kick and chase, and it's a backing pace now. Can Hoyt get themselves back to carry the ball over that try line? The acceleration was from Cody McGovern. And uh, Hoyt then, he felt that if they just carried on working it through the hands, they were in a good area of the pitch to try and begin the process of closing out the game, albeit with a good five minutes left on the clock. But Curry have them back down inside the 22 once more. Yeah, and just and that's what pressure does. Just when everything is going right for Hoyk, they've hit their line out, which was a brilliant line out. You know, right to the tail. It was accurate from Ross Graham and it was accurate from Jay Linton. Managed to get the ball down, drive it. They go round the corner and they keep going until Kurt Ford runs out of ideas because he's run out of space. He tries to stab a little opportunistic kick over. It's charged down, and we did say that, you know, at these games with fine margins, it just takes one error, one lapse of judgment, one opportunity for the sides to have, and that was almost it for Curry. They turned it over, managed to keep the ball in hand, and at the right moment kicked downfield and made it a bit of a foot race, and Lewis Ferguson back really, really well for Hoyk, but these are the sort of things which change games, and this is going to be interesting to see what Michael Todd's going to be saying to the Hoyk personnel. They'll also be thinking on about player of the match as the referee has shown another yellow card so they are mounting up Dale and Kyle Brunton has been shown a yellow card for an infringement in the build up to that phase of play so just when things were, were difficult for Hoyk they're now down to 13 men and that will be again for the, the remainder of the final unless uh, Curry look to take it to extra time by going for a penalty but um, kick at the post here but uh, so Kyle Brunton yellow carded Dalton Red pass on two yellow cards, so it's a red. Curry then up against the 13 men of Hoyk. And we've got this opportunity in the closing stages how this would change the atmosphere around the ground. Definitely. And, you know, this is what you want in a Premiership final. This is what you want in these games is you want it to go down to the, the very last the very last minute. You know, in the last moments, the game still finally in the balance. Hoyk went the whole season unbeaten. They need to win this game to be crowned Premiership champions. And Curry, they've still got a chance here. They've still got an opportunity. And they're in a great position to do that. And, you know, in terms of a spectacle for amateur rugby in Scotland, this is, uh, has been an interesting, intriguing final. It's maybe not had a lot of tries, but it's had a lot of intricacies throughout the, throughout the proceedings. You're yeah, watching on here. As Paddy Boyer then looking to feed the ball in, there's the engagement. Boyer readies himself. Ball's going to be made available just out towards the corner. It's been picked up by the Curry number eight, and they're slipping and sliding in the mud inside that 22. They look to try and straighten up here, and it was the, the second row forward there reaching towards the line. You and Stewart getting close towards the line. And the white down to 30 minutes. Incredibly nervy moments for both sets of players and supporters. It's another penalty awarded to Curry. And you feel with the numerical advantage in terms of personnel on the pitch, they want to try and see it out. But are they going to go for the post to level it up? I think it's interesting. My gut feeling was go, to the, go for the posts because you could get yourself another opportunity, you know, within the dying, uh, within the dying embers. And 
you know, what might happen is you get the scrum here, there's, there's certainly still Hoyk have ascendancy in the scrum, they've got a, an advantage, the difficulty here for Hoyk is the fact that in the backs, where Curry have been so dangerous, that's where they're a man down now, so in defensively, they're going to have to work incredibly hard if they want to be crowned Premiership champions. Yeah, they've got to keep clean hands and good feet here, as uh, I think we're looking at uh, man of the match and a very difficult decision it's been, but I think we're going to go with uh, DJ Innes off the out outside centre of Curry as the, the man of the match the ball in to this scrummage and Curry trying to make some ground picked up then by Boyer on towards the fly half they've got a bit of wits on here Curry and it could be in the corner the referee raising the arm Cody McGovern in the corner Curry leaping for joy as they're in the corner and almost silence around Mansfield Park apart from a clutch of Curry supporters who are going wild across on that far side on the banking but you can see width so important here Hoyk were stretched McGovern was across on that right hand side he's over for the try 14-16 the conversion will make it more than a penalty required there's an awful lot resting on this kick from Jamie Forbes and it's an acute angle as well and we're into the final seconds now Dale and I, we've witnessed over the years some late, late drama at Mansfield Park and if Hoyk are going to pull this one from the fire as Matty Carrier is stripped and ready to come on in that front row it's going to be up there with uh, one of the, the most dramatic comebacks Definitely, this is a huge kick from Jamie Forbes and then we can build it up and see where this game's going to go Crowd getting themselves involved as Forbes' kick is over! My goodness me! It looked somewhat laboured as he struck the ball and you can see how vocal he was aiming a lot towards the main stand who were trying to put him off, I think, vocally themselves. So it's more than a three-point game now. That Curry have found a way to perhaps win this. That is huge. When pressure is on, Jamie Forbes is stood up and slotted one from the touchline and Hoyk need to get this ball back now they need the ball in their hands if they want to get any way back into this game well Curry from the restart the clock inside the ground has gone 80 the clock on our screen has gone 80 we must be mighty close to the end of the contest Hoyk looking for a turnover ball they've got the turnover here it's on now Sean Muir we've seen this sort of thing before with Hoyk they've got the penalty they'll have to run this and Curry, they're getting very close. They still have the opportunity to kick to the corner. If they kick to the corner from the penalty, they can then throw the line out. They can go for the line out because, it, you know, you've got attacking yeah. preferences there. So Kirk Ford here will be looking to go to the corner, exactly do that. They'll have to be accurate with the kick. Hoyt's last roll of the dice. Yeah, it very much is as they go towards the corner. But run it, I mean, they can't afford this to go for the post and the, the three points. They've got to engineer something from open play. Marty Carrier coming across, just off the bench, Carrier, a hugely experienced player, and this is a, a big moment for him. Anxiety, it's the last throw of the dice then for Hoyk. Sean Muir comes across with the instructions. Carrier then with the throw, been one in the line, Sean Fairbairn, Opportunity here, Curry will look to try and disrupt. Hoyt looking to get a drive on here, they're forcing them back. Remember, it's the 13 men of Hoyt. Here come the reinforcements. The referee looking for any possible infringements. Curry looking to try and slow them up. Hoyt looking to spread the ball wide. Hoyt will want to ensure that the hands remain safe and there's no knock ons. Sean Muir carries. Late drama here, Welsh on then towards the full back. Fullback was almost wrapped in the tackle there, running in Kirk Ford into contact. Contact. It's picked up there by Mitchell. Hoyk again. Curry back to the feet. Desperate efforts here from Ewan Stewart and from Will Ingalls in the second row. They've just left the door, slight, door slightly ajar for Hoyk. Curry with this four point margin. And it's back now, Hoyt looking to try and find a central way up five metres from the line. Last throw of the dice, but they're certainly making it count with phase after phase. They're getting closer towards the line. Matty Carrier almost over. Curry having to reorganise the defence. 
Bucket comes towards the fullback. Kirk Ford wrapped in the tackle. Three metres short of the line. Picked up again by Wells. Looking to recycle. On goes Jay Linton. Curry looking for any sort of mistake now from Hoyk. Muir. They've not made any so far. They've made it such a dramatic end. Curry penalised for not rolling away. Another penalty here for Hoyk. Chance for Curry to draw breath. Chance for Hoyk to seize an opportunity here. Deep into stoppage time. It's playing out as it has done so many times in the past with Mansfield Park providing such late drama. There's a huge, huge line out there from Matty Carrier. They managed to get the momentum in the mall as well, but the accuracy from every single Hoyt player there was exactly what it needed at that time. They manipulated the penalty, they got themselves into a good position. They actually look like they've got more bodies than the opposition. And in terms of attacking, they have to keep it tight. They, they can't really afford to throw it wide unless Curry gets so narrow that they've got an opportunity. It needs to be tight. Hoyt pick and go once again. Last fling by Linton and by Hoyk. Curry have got to keep them out to win the championship. Hoyk must score a try to secure the championship. Welsh almost found a little gap there. It was then closed right in front of his face. They look to try and pick and go once more. Getting closer. The anxiety is palpable on the faces of the Hoyt spectators. Agitated, both Hoyk and Curry supporters. It's playing down right to the very end. This is what a playoff final, I suppose, is all about. As Curry are looking to try and steal on towards their own line. McKean across on this left hand side is desperate for Hoyt to try and spread the ball wide because he's got a, a bit of width. Advantage coming the way of Hoyt, and it's now with uh, Sean Muir again. Muir is tackled. Curry looking to try and spread the defence. It's out towards the left hand side, and then the over for the score. The referee looks towards the assistant. She keeps the flag down. McKean was calling for the ball, and McKean's in for the try, and it's Bedlam inside Mansfield Park. The assistant goes underneath the post. We'll see it again. He peeled away on the left hand side. The long loop pass. Curry simply could not get to him. And he's in for the score. Spectators are on the pitch celebrating. There was the roll away as Curry had too many men committed. And there was McKean leaping to gather the ball. And over he goes for the try. Curry thought they had the game won. The referee still speaking to his assistant across on the far side there's the scoreboard change to 1918 the kick matters not Dale I, I, Ethan Riley was my, my second my second guy I didn't think he'd done enough in the second half in terms of winning man of the match but that pass has won the final for Hoyt I said they had to keep it tight they kept it tight they kept it tight they kept going round the corner and Curry got far too narrow they had the main advantage they just got too narrow allowed Ronan McKean space and it, as you say, it matters not. This is all ceremonial now in terms of the conversion attempt from Kurt Ford. Out wide, stretch that lead, and Hoyk, when they eventually, when that whistle goes, they will be Premiership champions. Yes, a 13th championship for Hoyk, of course, coming in different guises through the restructuring in 74, right through to 2002, and then, of course, the restructuring again in more recent times. That looks as if it's going to drift in and over it has. And the referee blows for full time and Hoy have engineered the victory by 21 points to 18. Curry will find this a very bitter pill to swallow given they had opened up a four point advantage with just two minutes of the regulation 80 left to play. It's back to back premiership defeats for Curry. It's a 13th championship for Hoy. It was in Curry's grasp, but they just could not close it out. And credit to the discipline of Sean Muir and his Hoyt side. As uh, Welsh, the replacement scrum half, goes round the Curry players and uh, offering a, a, a warm handshake and some condol words of condolence. But 21 18 is the, the scoreline. And Dale, well, we mentioned you and I have been down at Mansfield Park over the years and watched some drama, but uh, this was high stakes drama this afternoon. Yeah, it was brilliant. A, a little word for Kirk Ford there, by the way, because after the celebrations, all the Hoyt players were in their own half celebrating together. Kirk Ford has pretty much shook every single Curry player's hand after that victory. You know, that's great class from that fullback who got the, the end of that game. But in terms of drama, in terms of what we've witnessed together over the years, Stuart, the games that we've been to, uh, to witness, you know, last minute wins, last minute defeats for Hoyt, this has to be up there with the best, if not the best, you know, advert for, for club rugby. 
a team down to 13 men, hadn't played well throughout the game, still found the way to win in the end. And that's what champions do. Champions win when they don't play well. And well done to well done to Curry because they've came down here backs against the wall after what they've been through this season in terms of facing Hoyt they, they had a free swing at it the pressure was completely off them and they were almost Premiership champions but it just happens the history books are going to show that Curry have been defeated in the playoff final two years in a row and it is Hoyt this year that the Premiership champions yeah a mighty close affair I think a lot of people felt that with Hoyt having home advantage and two emphatic wins that they would be able to do something similar again but you see, this was the Ian Sim try inside the, the early stages of the, the first half. A well-constructed try. Greg Carney with the pass on towards the player of the, the match, DJ Innes. And then in towards Ian Sim. And he was over for a score. Curry at one stage had opened up, I think, an 11-3 yeah, lead in that first that half as well. And uh, Hoyk, though, were able to reply on the stroke of half-time, Fraser Rennick scoring to bring the game back to a three-point match before uh, we started the second period. Yeah, and that's, that was a big score. You know, at the end of both halves, Hoyk have scored, you know, points, essentially. They, they, it was 12 points, but that's been the 12 points which have got them over the line. And, you know, it's been huge, and especially coming out in the second half, getting that penalty from Kirk Ford kind of got the, the momentum going in the second half. That took it to 14 points to 11. And from then, they clung on, and they clung on for another, what was it, 34 minutes until Curry eventually did this. And, of course, at this stage, down to 13 men, Brunton on a yellow card, Dalton red path, two yellows are red. The ball, you can see, worked its way out towards Cody McGovern, and McGovern was in in the corner. Now, that had Curry back in front. The conversion was going to be so important. And uh, my goodness me, they landed it 18 14 at that stage. Yeah, it was a, a brilliant kick from uh, Jamie Ford's from the touchline. And you thought that, you know, Hoyk weren't going to score that try. They, they just couldn't have it in them to, you know, get themselves back up again. 13 men. But this is what happened. Welsh changed the game when he came on the second half, and Riley, who was definitely Hoyt's man of the match, managed to feed Ronan McKean on the sideline, and, and he went in for a score. All the you know the wingers getting in on it, but that's a you know a great way to end what has been an enthralling season. Hoyt have been head and shoulders above everybody, but they had to do it the hard way. They were made to work right to the end by Curry to win that final. So, uh, many spectators just congratulating the, the Hoyt players commiserating with uh, any of the, the Curry players that are, are still down there. You'll get to see the, the trophy. It's now on the Scottish Rugby Plinth. The winners and runners-up medals will be presented just in a short while. And uh, there is the Premiership Championship trophy. And, and do you know, that's a great thing as well, a, a point that the club captain Matty Carriers came off the bench and I think he made a huge impact in terms of the accuracy of that line out to play for, you know, it could potentially be one of his last games for the club and he was over in that five metre line, hits the line out and it was there that Curry uh, Hoyt started to build that pressure and it's just, in terms of the, the intricacies of that game it's a huge involvement from the bench for Hoyt, Carrier coming on and hitting that line out, the involvement of Welsh and now, you know, Hoyt are able to find themselves as the elite club in, in Scottish club rugby, a, a place that they've not been for a couple of decades now Yeah, they'll, they'll certainly enjoy taking the, the silverware, it's got that sort of old fashioned look to it, the trophy uh, no lid to it but uh, so no chance for that to disappear but uh, I can see with the, the microphone Ian Landles will be a proud man this evening he'll probably be announcing the Curry players to come up to receive their Premiership Championship final runners-up medals but um, understandably given the efforts of both teams but particularly of Hoyt, they want to take just a few moments to be with family and friends before they receive the trophy but it's a moment that they will thoroughly enjoy Yeah, this is, you know, there's not a lot of times in, in your career that you that you get to win trophies, like you're always competing in leagues and you're competing in cups and there's, uh, it's rare occasions that you're actually to be part of the, the lucky elite to, to get your hands on a trophy and it, they, they're savouring it, you know, it's great to see all the, the, the Hoyk people, if you go back to the, you know, the, the, the effort to get this game on, the snow that we've had, the frost that we've had, you know, the, the community effort from everybody at Hoyk to make sure this game can go ahead, they, they should be revelling in this moment, I think that, you know, it's going to be a, 
a great day for the Hoyk as a rugby club, you know, to, to get themselves to justify the way that they've gone through the season, get to the playoffs, win the final and to become champions. You know, it's, it's a great community effort. We did talk about the two clubs before. Curry, you know, a, a club in the city that are a, a historic club, but they attract players to them. Hoyk have to work hard to retain their homegrown talent and they've done exactly that and that will just feed into this community you know the community spirit and the feeling of uh, achievement that they're going to feel in Hoyt just now and I can see an, a, a board on the pitch they've obviously had a certain amount of confidence in Hoyt because they've made up their own champions board that by size dwarfs the Scottish Rugby Union tenants branded premiership winners board uh, so they've obviously gone to a local printers uh, with a lot of confidence I'm sure they've got curry on the other side though I think if you flip that over I'm sure they hedged their bets may well be the case and uh, credit as well to the, the Curry spectators, many of them made it a, a very um, enjoyable and memorable occasion but uh, you can see how disappointed the Curry players are and Dale you mentioned it, you know, thinking the likes of Charlie Brett, DJ Innes and that to have gone through, you know, a whole season, to have been playing in a Premiership final on your own ground 11 months ago and to lose to Mar and then you know, to have suffered two heavy defeats to Hoyt, but to come within seconds of winning the Premiership, of uh, stealing the title, as some people would say, but on the day, they, they looked as if they'd done just about enough to win it. Yeah, you, you would say that they, they did learn a lot from last year. They probably learned a lot from what Mar did to them in terms of the spectators they brought down, the way that they approached the game. And, you know, I think they can probably be a bit more proud than what they were last year. They were deflated. They've came back and they've given it another go. They've replenished the squad they've just not been able to get over the line it's been harder this time because they've had to travel away from home against what has been the best team in Scottish club rugby without a doubt you can't even argue the case but they almost won it if it wasn't for the last minute of the game that last pass that last try they'd be premiership champions we'd be watching the the, the boys in green going up there and picking up the runners up medals but just the way that sport goes it just happens to be Curry that come on in the, the wrong end of a defeat the one thing we're talking about how emphatic it's been in terms of the regulation season, can you see that Hoyk will spend a period of time now being a really dominant side in the division or do you think that we're going to witness a sort of nice geographical sprinkling of champions given Mars' success, Hoyk and the fact that Currier, you suspect if they can keep the nucleus of these players perhaps going to be there or thereabouts in 12 months time again? I think the latter, if I'm being honest, um, in terms of I think we will see a geographical kind of spread of where the championship will go in time because you look at what Mar done, Mar were almost uh, kind of like victims of their own success because once they had such a successful campaign everybody's kind of looking at them going hey he's a good player and he's a good player and you know they want those players, the ambitious players want to have that step up you might find Hoyk might have the same, there might be these Super 6 clubs floating about looking at the likes of Jay Lint and Charlie Welsh a young player who's, who's coming through the ranks and obviously made a name for himself Andrew Mitchell as well, he's been a brilliant player. They might want another shot at this. So that's what Super 6 does. It allows the you know, the development pathway for these players to go through. And it might just be that some of these white players might want to stab at it. Yeah, well, since the last top flight domestic championship back in 2002, Hoik, of course, have had a, a period out with the top flight. They reached the cup final, but on that occasion were beaten by Borough Muir back in 2015. But... Uh, as we mentioned, the, the league reconstruction introduction of Super 6 has certainly helped elevate Hoyt back towards the upper echelons of club rugby in Scotland. And this afternoon is their day. They're once again crowned club champions. It will be a, a 13th trophy in the, the recent uh, reconstruction of the leagues. And uh, they will take every moment after receiving the winner's medals uh, to receive the trophy and uh, just in, enjoy this particular moment because apart from uh, I think one or two of these players that will have uh, experienced maybe border league success, it's really been success on the, the seventh circuit for these players so it's a, a unique moment. Yeah definitely you know they, they won their 50th border league last year and uh, one of the players there Matty, Car Matty Carrier who captain the side that day was able to lift it, Sean Muir has been a great playing captain for the team obviously both players going up together to lift this and this is a great occasion for them and they'll just take a few moments, ready themselves, and there's the championship. Hoyt lifting the trophy. The champagne has been on ice. 
it was almost taken off ice and put back in the cupboard when Cody McGovern scampered in in the corner in the final two minutes to give Curry the lead with that conversion added and at Hoyt having to claw back a four point deficit with 13 men on the park but somehow they found a way and the time was certainly allowed uh, by the, the referee for Hoyk to go again and Dale you have to say that uh, all credit to them because uh, that, that, that this win I suppose summed up in a word today's performance is character definitely you know I, I think that they've, they've shown that and I, I was I've been speaking to people before the game about how Hoyk have got here and they have they, they played well and put the teams round about them really to the sword and had emphatic victories but sometimes they've, they've struggled against GHA and they've struggled against the teams at the, the bottom of the league, bearing in mind they drew against Selkirk as well, they've had times where they've had to really pull themselves through and I think you're right, it's the character it's the character that has uh, brought them through in the end and you know, I just watched Ronan McKean he lift the trophy there and I do remember the last time that Hoyk had notable success on the domestic front was the, the BT Cup final years and years ago and it was uh, Nicky Walker who was obviously a young Hoyk winger at the time scored an extra time to beat Glasgow Hawks and you know it's those sort of moments that, that stay with you as a club and breed success and you can see all the youngsters as well onto the pitch celebrating with what are their local heroes so it's a, a huge huge moment for, for Hoyk, those players and everybody involved with the club. Well, congratulations to Hoyt, commiserations to Curry Chieftains. It uh, certainly was a, a nerve-wracking end to the contest. And uh, both sides, uh, certainly this afternoon, at times bringing their A-game, but uh, bringing full commitment uh, to the cause. And Hoyt, having finished top of the pile at the regulation season, leaving it very, very late, but doing enough to win the championship and the celebrations will begin in this part of the borders this evening. Congratulations to Hoyt, congratulations to Curry, and thank you very much for your company this afternoon. Hoyt are this season's tenants, Premiership winners.